Uh, I'm Black Pride, broadcasting out of the UK into your homes, onto your phones and into your space. Welcome to my channel. Um, somebody um, asked me yesterday, they just made a, no, they didn't even ask me a question. They just said to me, oh, you know, my boss has asked me to go into work and I feel very uncomfortable about it. Well, my immediate reaction was, how can somebody ask you to go back to work when there's a lockdown? when you're supposed to be protecting yourself and employers are meant to be protecting you. But I didn't know the answer. And so I just said to her, listen, you know, you just better make sure if you go back to work um, that you cover up, you make sure you have your masks and you protect yourself as much as possible. And, um, you know, I know that some businesses are closing down we're not closing down, are being fined. So I thought to my, well, I did say to her, worst case scenario, if they are found to be open and um, employing people and they get fined, the onus will not be on you. Anyway, that went out, totally out of the window. This morning, I'm going through LinkedIn and I come across an article by L Colare Soneke, not looking for anything. And what does it talk about? Employment law update and what your rights are with regard to if you're asked to go back to work. Well, I couldn't miss the opportunity to share it with you guys because I always believe if one person wants to know a question, there'll be other people who want to know it as well. So therefore, I'm here to share it with you. If you like what I talk about, please click the thumbs up please share because now we've got so much YouTube. I don't normally stress it, but now we've got so many YouTubes working from home. Everybody's um, video gets stuck to the bottom and YouTube cannot, does not have the capacity to notify subscribers. So if you find it interesting, please share it, please subscribe. And yeah, that's all I've got to say for that. So let me start with what you have tuned into this video about. During the pandemic, there is currently no legislation or government mandate requiring employers to keep their employees away from the office. So technically, if an employer needs its employees to attend work, they are legally required to do so. This is according to the article by Kolare Someke, and I'm going to um, read the actual passage in a moment from the phone. I was going to write it out, but it was just too long. Okay, so, however, every employer must consider if they genuinely need employees to attend work or whether, in fact, their work can be done remotely. Employees who are exposed to an increased risk of contracting the virus because they attend work, including taking public transport to get there, might have a valid claim for damages against such an employer if they, can th if they then catch the virus. Or alternatively, they can resign and claim constructive dismissal. Constructive dismissal means you've been forced to resign because of the situation. You know, this pandemic, you're absolutely paranoid. You don't know how you're going to protect yourself to get from A to B. There's no um, masks in the workplace, no PPE, and you feel very vulnerable, that kind of thing. And there's no social distancing in those kind of circumstances. If an employer unavoidably requires its employer, employees to attend work, it must take proactive steps to protect the health and safety of its employees and promote their welfare. That's a, far, that's a far cry from slavery, isn't it? You know, back in the day, you had to work whether you liked it or not. Do you think you had any rights? Do you think you had any health and safety rights? You definitely didn't. So now you have health and safety. You're protected by the Health and Safety Act of 1974. OK, so now I'm going to read what he has put on LinkedIn, what I think is relevant. I might have to repeat what I just said, but hopefully not. I'm sorry about me disengaging from you from the screen while I read it. OK, under the Health and Safety Act, 
So under the Health and Safety at Work Act 1974, all employers have a duty to ensure the health and safety and welfare at work of all their employees. Additionally, there are a whole sweep of rules and regulations to govern everything from adequate lighting to slipping and tripping hazards. You know, you'll find in a lot of workplaces they put the onus on the individual, um, the health and safety onus, because I know when I do my health and safety training, I'm responsible for reporting if there's any wires, I have to move things that could be a hazard. If I notice a hazard, I'm supposed to do something about it, report it to the health and safety executive or whatever it is. But it kind of shifts the full responsibility from the employer onto the employee in a lot of cases, not in all. Anyway, but during such an extreme pandemic, perhaps especially because of it, employers should be thinking not only about what to do to protect themselves from legal liability, but what they can do to promote the morale and well-being of employees during a period that is inherently stressful. And I know when I was going into the office, I was a nervous wreck. As you know, for those of you who look at my videos, I isolated in an office. And when somebody came in, I was absolutely paranoid. I didn't want anyone. And I know we were allowed six feet. I didn't even want anybody 12 feet in front of me. And that's how stressful I found it. Because I just didn't know who had it. Nobody's wearing masks. Now they're talking about everybody should wear the mask. See, I told you so, because you don't know who's asymptomatic. You don't know who hasn't got it yet. You don't know whether or not it's latent. And these, period, these people could be spreading the virus onto unsuspecting individuals. So, yes, for some people, it's extremely stressful to go into work or to be asked to go to work when there's a pandemic. They say there's no, they don't see it um, slowing down. Apparently, we haven't reached the peak yet. We're almost there, but we haven't seen the downturn of the curve. So at the moment, people are still worried. Yes, they do want to go back to work. They do want to get their income. A lot of people don't want to stay home and be furloughed or paid not to work. A lot of people want to be productive, but they also want to be safe and they also want to keep their family safe. So the question do we have to send employees home even if we need them at work? So that's when I was talking about there's no current legislation. So I've read or I've told you all of that. Um, what can we do to protect our employees if they are at work? As an employer, you must take proactive steps to promote the welfare of your employees. In these circumstances, these steps would include carry out a risk assessment focused on the coronavirus in your specific workplace. Institute formal hand washing, distancing, sneezing and coughing, etc. policies for all employees and make sure they are communicated visibly. Introduce shift work, different working hours, altered workspaces where possible, to reduce the number of staff present at any time. But if that's the case, case, why were they talking about, well, I guess restaurants, they are quite close together, aren't they? I guess that's why takeaway was allowed. Okay, increasing clean and wipe down routine, including for equipment. So on our desks, we all have those um, wipes, so that we can wipe down all the areas that we've been to from the time we came in. We can wipe them down after people have left. And it gives, we can wipe down our phones and it gives us a sense of surety. Some people say you can get the virus from using your phone if you put it down somewhere on a dirty surface that's got the virus. So don't forget your, your mobile phone. Clean that off with surgical wipes or biological wipes or whatever those wipes are. What are they called? <laughs> Detergent wipes. Yeah, so make sure even your phone, I know it's yours, you keep it in your pocket, but often you put it down. So, and you don't know where you're putting it down and you don't know who put their hands on it. Okay, um, what else? Providing masks, protective clothing where necessary and sufficient hand sanitizers supply and ensure it is readily accessible. 
that's a problem. Hand sanitizers, it's best that they're in a machine. You'll find people nicking them, taking them home. So um, um, companies who are providing sanitizers have to make sure that they have it in one of those machine things. So people can't just whiz it off. Um, what else is there? Um, conduct daily temperature checks. To, oh, it's a bit much, isn't it? But this is what you need to do, apparently. Conduct daily temperature checks to identify employees beginning to show symptoms, though do not, but though do note that you should get an employee's consent before doing so, so that the so to protect any data collected. So apparently, as soon as you walk through the door, your employer is supposed to give you a temperature test. It's a bit like in China. You know, we thought it was a bit extreme seeing those cars come up. They do a temperature test and for all the drivers and then they allow them to go on. So this is the implication here. Take proactive steps and send any one home who shows symptoms. Appoint a coronavirus S. A TSAR, appoint a coronavirus czar, I guess, responsible for keeping up to date with the latest guidance and ensuring compliance with policies at work. Limit travel to the absolute minimum. These are what employee, employers must do if they want their employees to go back to work. Collate emergency contact details for every employee. Identify employees specifically vulnerable because of age or underlying health conditions and put in an appropriate special measures to protect them or living with a vulnerable people or people showing symptoms. I don't think that came over correctly. OK, identify employees specifically vulnerable because of their age, underlying health conditions and and put in appropriate special measures to protect them or living with vulnerable people or people showing symptoms. Provide general access to any employee to raise and discuss their concerns. Well, I think my employees have definitely seen this because they're doing everything to the letter. So no one measure will do. Rather, as an employer, you must take an holistic approach centred on the question, have we done all we reasonably can to protect our employees? If employees are unavoidably public facing, these and other measures may be necessary, but probably most important is the enforcement of these procedures to ensure safety. It will not be enough to have a set of policies that the employer knows is not following in, in practice. Employers should engage with any relevant unions and also review their public and employee liability insurance and ensure it is fit for purpose. Question. Are we liable for health and safety for employees working at home? Now, this is an interesting one. If your employees are working remotely, that means that part of their home in which they are working is effectively a sanctioned workplace. Your duties as an employer will extend to protecting them in this workplace. Well, I wonder how many of you knew that. I certainly didn't know that. But it's very, very important to know. To a large extent, you are entitled to rely on the common sense of your employee to arrange and manage their own home safety. Nevertheless, there are certain steps that you should take. Create and send your employees a check list on safe home working set up and practice. Now, I haven't received that, but not to worry. Recommend sufficient, I'm going to have a look at it. Recommend sufficient breaks and exercises. Well, somebody sent me a, um, a video. And yes, we do have a poster. Well, maybe they have sent it to us. And, you know, you get so much paperwork 
and flyers it's just like oh enough is enough so maybe I might need to put a disclaimer on that maybe I've got it but I just haven't read it okay um, provide any necessary ergonomic equipment keyboard screen mouse chair like the chair I've got here can you see it's ergonomic and it's even got this thing at the back look <laughs> That's my ergonomic chair. A hell trying to get it into work. I did not realize getting it from work to here. Colleague of mine. Oh, it's lovely to have, you know, sometimes going off the subject a little bit during this pandemic, sometimes you don't have um, friends and relatives that can help you in times when you need them. And you can kind of feel, oh, woe is me and feel sorry for yourself. But I tell you something. The hearts of strangers. I needed a my ergonomic chair to be brought to my home. And I thought, I don't know anybody who can bring it to me who's got a van uh, big enough to bring it. Because it's quite, it look, doesn't look big in the office, but it's big uh, in terms of in this, in this room, which is relatively small when you think a big open plan office. So I was thinking, feeling, feeling sorry for myself when somebody said, oh, haven't you got any friends or haven't you got anybody you could ask? And I'm like, mm -hmm. woe is me. Anyway, I, as usual, I, I'm, I'm always thinking of opportunities and I'm always thinking of the bright side. So I thought, OK, what I do is I'll send out, well, I'll ask my boss if I can send out a cascade and ask if anybody at work could bring the chair. So um, within... Not even two hours. Somebody wrote to me, oh, man, do you have your chair yet? And I'm like, no, I was, you know, I shouldn't be shocked because ask and it shall be given. I shouldn't be shocked, but I was surprised at the magnanimous, how many people responded and said, have you got your chair? Somebody said to me, look, my husband's coming down that way. We'll bring it over to you. I don't think they realised how heavy the chair was. <laughs> I didn't realise how heavy the chair was. I just wheel it around. Anyway, when he got it here, he could. He was shoving it through the front door. All the paint got on the side. I was a bit annoyed about that. But when I rolled it into my living room, my living space where I am now, and attempted to take it up the stairs, it could not move. It was that heavy. So, got the chair, but... I, I've had to um, sit on it, you know, downstairs. But my point is, is that, yes, you do need your ergonomic equipment. Um, we've got no porterage facilities at the moment with the pandemic. So, but it was nice to know that sometimes don't feel sorry for yourself. Always ask for what you want. Always ask for what you want. My neighbours are absolutely wonderful. Anything I need. They'll do it for me. It's when I'm thinking about, you know, um, things to do with the house. Oh, I shouldn't be talking so much because now it's gone. But no, anything to do with the house, if I need, you know, because I can't get a contractor. Not major, major things. But I'm just saying during the pandemic, all you've got to do is ask. So if you need ergonomic equipment at work, I'm going to get back to the point. Just ask your employer to arrange it if you have to work at home. OK, so recommendations of screen time limits. Hmm. Well, sometimes you get so involved, like I said the other day, I start at eight and I make sure I've got my regime going on just as though I'm going to work, get up at six o'clock, have my shower, have my breakfast and do what I need to do. By eight o'clock, I'm at my desk. But sometimes if I was at work, I'd be going into the, co into the kitchen, 10 o'clock to have a cup of tea. 11 o'clock to have a cup of tea, 12 o'clock to have a cup of tea, and then I'd have my lunch at one. But here, the other day, I got my boss called me, and it was 11.25, and I hadn't shifted. And I realised all morning, I'd sat at, that, at my desk on just dealing with work without a break. So it is important. Maybe you should have an alarm so you know when to get up and have a break because you need to stretch your legs. I need to take my own advice. OK, so recommending screen time limits. It shouldn't be more than 20 minutes and then you should turn your head away and do something else. Um, I guess with um, working from home, it is better because you can't print out stuff. I would, be I would be inclined to print out stuff and look at it and look at that. So you do have to take your face away from the screen most of the time anyway. 
institute regular call-ins to check up and assess the emotional well-being of employees. I actually, um, we have Microsoft Teams, so I actually wrote to a couple of my colleagues and asked them because we used to have an administrator's peer group. And so I asked them if they um, wanted to continue through Microsoft Teams because we'd all have similar concerns. So I haven't heard back from them, but it was Friday. Maybe they're not working Friday. So we'll, I'll see on Monday whether or not I've heard from them because that would be a good way to promote your well-being, talking to people who have something in common with you. Create and promote a clear work how sorry, create and promote a clear work hours policy to help your employees overworking. I.e. e.g. no work emails after 6 p.m. Well, I switch off my um, email at four o'clock when I can. The other day, like I said, I worked until five, but for the most part, I put my out of office off on from 4 p.m. until 8 o'clock the following morning, and I switch it off. So, yes, yeah, so it doesn't matter if they want to write to me after after 4 p.m. I'm not going to switch on my, comp my laptop. I just turn it off. Okay, again, it is about thinking broadly about the circumstances and impact on employees when working from home for prolonged periods of time. I don't know what prolonged periods of time is. That's relative. Last week was my first week working at home and it took me nearly the whole week to get used to it. Now I've kind of got the swing of it. Question, do we have a specific duties in relation to pregnant employees? Pregnant women are designated as a specific risk. So I'm not going to go into pregnant employees really because I'm sure they know that um, you cannot require a pregnant woman to self-isolate whilst requiring other employees to attend work. Anyway, I'm going to put this link because this is quite long. I don't really want to go into everything. How do I know an employee is really sick and not just using the opportunity to stay off work? I can imagine how many people are doing that. But I would argue it's not in their best interest to do that. Number one, if you're self-isolating or you're quarantined, you're off anyway. If you're furloughed, you're off anyway. Who wants to be sick? During, and you know what can happen. If you say you're sick or you've caught the virus when you haven't, you're going to have the public health um, authority calling you and making you get tested. So don't even try it. Don't even try it. Anyway, since there is little opportunity for employees to see a doctor, during this period, employers will generally have to rely on self-certification. Self-certification normally only lasts for seven days, though. If an employer has good reason to believe that an employee is pretending to be sick, I like the way pretending to be sick and not lying, how polite, uh, they can raise this with the employee and, in extreme cases, take disciplinary action. However, in these extreme circumstances, I would suggest that there is little option but to take an employee on faith. Well, like I said, they are thinking about testing, especially NHS staff and essential key workers. You know, those people that are saying they're off sick, they're thinking about testing them. So, I'm um, going Question, what about sick pay for employees who catch the virus? Employers, employees who are unable to work because of the virus are entitled to sick pay as normal. In this particular period, any employee that chooses to self-isolate, even if not sick, is also entitled to statutory sick pay. And I think that's £94 a week. As far as contractual sick pay is concerned, this depends entirely on the particular terms of the contractual sick pay policy. Employers should be alive to the risk that low sick pay provisions are likely to push employees to attend work even if they're not strictly needed. So use of furlough provisions should be considered. I didn't know you could use furlough provisions for sick pay. That's quite good. So they can still get their 80% pay instead of getting the £94 a week. Um, 
that you probably have to wait goodness knows how long for from the um, universal credit. That's really good. Anyway, I thought that was really useful and I hope you did too. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.